politics uh, involved, I'm Jay Lair, Science Director of the Heartland Institute. Uh, I will be uh, uh, Donald Forbes, who is a uh, retired uh, Navy guy. Uh, he's 88 years old, has a phenomenal uh, background, enlisted in the Navy in 1944, uh, got an appointment uh, and was an enlisted fellow on a ship and a hospital uh, corpsman and uh, got an appointment to the Naval Academy in 1946, graduated in 1950, uh, became a, a Naval Airman, stayed in till 1977. At one time, he was at the Naval Academy in, in charge of uh, the plebes, uh, midshipmen, and uh, retired and had another career with Booz uh, Allen. And uh, at 88, he's had a bit of a, a hip problem that happened recently and uh, was unable to make it. But he and I, our talks uh, overlap uh, somewhat, so I've been able to uh, combine them and give uh, his talk and mine, which I love because it gives me an extra 15 minutes at the mic, which is something I love dearly. Uh, and then uh, a batting cleanup will be... Uh, uh, James Taylor uh, giving uh, his uh, part of it. This is an incredibly uh, important subject because uh, we're talking about uh, military uh, preparedness and uh, it, it's something that's going to affect uh, this, this nation and uh, we, we've really got to get on it and not weaken our military. So that's going to be the, the general theme. But uh, I would guess that eventually uh, our boss, Joe Bass, will be watching this uh, uh, TV. And, and based on all the talks we've heard and the language we've heard about what is going on uh, with uh, climate change and global warming, uh, I want to put uh, uh, Joe in the company of uh, two of the smartest people I've uh, met and known uh, in my life, which I mentioned in a talk this morning. Uh, and uh, they are Albert Einstein, who I had an acquaintance with at uh, Princeton, uh, King Hubbard, who was a, a brilliant physicist who made the mistake of predicting uh, peak oil, which got us into much of the trouble we're in, uh, and, and Joe Bass, uh, I, I really count in that group. I've worked with him for 20 years. He's amazing. But he also uh, made a mistake 10 years ago uh, that I think is worth bringing out. Uh, a little more than a decade ago, I wrote a paper in which I uh, called uh, a global warming uh, the biggest uh, a fraud, hoax, and scam ever perpetrated on society. And I quoted uh, some things that uh, Hitler was doing uh, under Nazism. And uh, Joe very calmly and politely suggested it might not be a good idea for our size, side to bring Hitler and the Nazis in, uh, and that maybe instead of talking hoax, scam, or fraud, we could talk delusion. Uh, I, I think Joe was wrong then. I, we know he was wrong now because over and over again in the last, uh, in the, this day, uh, we have heard people calling a spade a spade, not mincing words. Uh, it is a fraud and a hoax, and I bring it up here because when I show you Donald Forbes' final uh, slide as we go through the problems in the military, uh, Donald clearly labeled it all uh, a, a scam. Now, uh, I want to uh, get into the fact that we have had at Heartland a close association with the military. Uh, I think it was in December or January, James, can you remember when we went to the DOD, we were invited uh, to visit them somewhere? It was uh, cold. It was cold. <laughs> Uh, Joe and uh, myself and James, the three J's, were invited to the Pentagon. And uh, we went to see John Conger, who was Deputy Undersecretary of the Defense, to talk about our concern with uh, Mr. Obama uh, asking them to develop a program to prepare the military uh, for uh, climate change. It was an interesting meeting. Uh, they were very cordial, and uh, interestingly enough, uh, Mr. Conger uh, said the kind of things they were doing with regard to climate change and the military were common sense things, and he gave two examples that I thought were fabulous. He said, if we have an installation on a coastline 
and the global warming people are projecting a rise in sea level, we won't put our computers in the basement of the buildings. All right, I was very comfortable with that. And he said, in Afghanistan, we are putting a lot of uh, truck drivers at risk supplying some of our bases with fuel in, ex uh, in, ex in Afghanistan, and they're, they're, they're being shot at and running over mines. So it might do us well to develop some solar energy in those faraway desert places. Hey, that, that sounded good to us. So uh, I walked away with a very good feeling about what the military was doing. Uh, Joe, uh, smarter than I, wrote them a letter, uh, was very uh, thankful for uh, our, our meeting, but uh, at the same time in the letter, uh, made every effort to hold their feet to the fire uh, a little more than the way uh, we were told at the meeting. Well, clearly, uh, Mr. Obama uh, doubled down in asking them uh, to do things which uh, clearly, clearly threaten uh, our military. And uh, talk about double down, uh, he tripled down. Last week in front of the Coast Guard Academy, he spoke at their graduation. Uh, there were 200 graduating uh, Coast Guard seamen and uh, 4,000 family members in the audience when he told this graduation crew that the greatest threat facing the world today was climate change. I, I mean, this was just a horrible and ugly statement. Nowhere uh, in his talk did he mention the problems uh, in the Middle East with ISIS or uh, any of the, uh, the many other problems that bother uh, the public. Uh, he said it was, uh, it was climate change. Well, uh, I have uh, decided that we need to enter uh, kind of a new phase in, in talking about the, uh, the military and, and talking about this whole subject. And I, I mentioned it this morning, and I'm going to uh, mention it more now because I think it might, uh, it might take root. The, the first thing I mentioned to the group this morning, if you weren't among us, is that uh, it's not enough to be excited about what Heartland is doing, to be excited about all the great speakers we have. Uh, you are already activists for having come to Washington to attend the conference. Uh, you've got to be more activists. Everybody in this room uh, needs to spend uh, some time. I, I think everybody should spend a minimum of two hours every month uh, talking uh, climate change fraud uh, to your friends, your neighbors, your newspapers, your radio programs, your elementary schools. Uh, somehow you have to figure out how to spend that time. Uh, and, and you've got to try to turn your friends, not your environmental zealot friends, if you happen to be sad enough to have them, uh, but to turn your objective-minded friends uh, to understand uh, what it's all about and uh, why they should realize that it's a plague on the economy of the, the world as well as the health of the world. And in this case, we're talking about the, the military and we're talking about the life of the world. The second issue that I want to bring to your attention, and uh, I'm a student of science history. I've, I've also had the opportunity to work behind the uh, Iron uh, Curtain before it came down and, and saw how uh, Russian science uh, was uh, really impeded uh, by a, a man most of you have heard of but probably know little about. Uh, his name was Trifem Lysenko. In 1920, uh, Russian agriculture was in terrible uh, trouble, and they were unable to feed themselves. And uh, this uh, science man, who became head of the Russian Academy of Science, uh, came up with an idea uh, that uh, if we uh, if we could take agricultural seeds and put them uh, in good light uh, and and give them proper uh, water and nutrition, uh, they would produce seeds that would heredit that would inherit uh, the th the good things that they acquired uh, from the proper uh, environment. Um, of course, he was wrong. It, it turned, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, biology on its, uh, on its head, but it, was, it used no science at all. 
It was just an idea, and the Russian Academy of Science adapted it, and they, to they told their students that wonderful things were going to happen with this new way of increasing uh, crops. And uh, it, it followed whenever there was a problem for the next decade or more, Lysenko would come up with a, an answer, a solution. Never ever backed by science, but in Russia in, in the, the 20s and 30s, and on until 1964, I might add, Lysenko's ideas sounded good, and the public accepted them, and, and Russian science was impeded for 44 years until Lysenkoism, or Lysenko's ideas were totally uh, eliminated uh, and brought down in 1964. We're going through a, single, a, sim, a, sim, a similar thing. Lysenkoism is now used as a term, metaphorically, where uh, a, a theory is, uh, is manipulated and distorted uh, to make science show a, an outcome that is biased, usually with some political or or social goal. We're in the midst of, of modern world, U.S., whatever, uh, Lysenkoism revolution, a, a horrible, horrible thing, uh, but it has gripped the whole public. Uh, we're winning the battle clearly with objective people, obviously not with the press, and we have an administration, uh, you know, bound and determined uh, to pursue a, a horrible course. We're here this afternoon talking uh, about the impact on the, uh, the military, and uh, it is a, a major, major uh, a problem. The, the high command, now, this didn't just start. The, the actual beginning of the military and climate change, as I'll show you with uh, Donald Forbes' slides at the end, uh, began in, uh, in 2007 when uh, a, a high command of military leaders uh, were briefed by uh, the most radical environmental uh, zealots led by James Hansen. Uh, these military people did not know really anything about climate science. They, they knew about their military, but uh, not wanting to cast aspersions on the military I will now cast dispersions on the military. Uh, the people they assembled as the chiefs of uh, uh, the Navy particularly uh, were high-ranking officers uh, not wanting to, to displease their commander-in-chief. Are you aware who their commander-in-chief is? We all, we all know our government. Uh, it is, of course, Mr. Obama. Uh, now, they didn't want to displease their commander-in-chief for a couple of reasons, uh, their uh, rank, they, they want to continue climbing the rank. They wanted to look forward to a, a good retirement. Uh, they didn't want to see their uh, income or pensions affected. Kind of normal human things and understand they knew nothing whatsoever technically until they were met by people who were entirely uh, against our uh, side of, of uh, what is going on. We now have a Secretary of the Navy whose name is Ray Mabus. And uh, he is an all-green guy. Uh, last month, we had uh, naval exercises off the coast of Hawaii. As a matter of fact, if you're not aware, we did them uh, in concert with the Chinese Navy. You might think that's a good or bad thing. I think it's a very good thing. I think the more you work together with your enemy, the less uh, chance they'll, they'll turn on you. We are actually doing a lot, I think, very beneficially working uh, with the, uh, the Chinese Navy. Uh, you're aware they now have a carrier. They never had a carrier before. They uh, got the carrier from uh, Russia. Uh, it took them a year and a half to outfit it and we're actually teaching them how to work the carrier. I, again, I think that's a good thing. 
But off the coast of Hawaii, Secretary of the Navy Ray Mabus said, the Navy fleet needs to use half of their fuel has to be renewable biofuel. Uh, they used 450,000 gallons of uh, biofuel at a cost of $27 a gallon. Uh, that sounds bad, but in the uh, Air Force uh, backup to the Navy, uh, they used uh, jet fuel that cost $424 a gallon, uh, made, believe it or not, from algae. Algae produced uh, renewable energy and uh, waste, fat, and grease from restaurants. $424 a gallon uh, for jet fuel. Normal jet fuel, which is quite expensive, alcohol-based, runs anywhere from 57 to 67 dollars a gallon. Uh, Mr. Mabus's plan is to have an all-green service navy by 2020. That's five years hence, and the cost estimates to the navy will be 1.9 billion dollars. Anyone want to guess what a new destroyer cost? 1.9 billion dollars. So the money that we are uh, spending in this manner is uh, going to reduce our weaponry, uh, reduce our ability uh, to protect our fighting men and women, and it is entirely disgraceful. Now, there's, there's more to this sort of thing that affects the military that I'm sure you've never thought of, and I'll bring it to your attention. Uh, we are unable to drill uh, in the Arctic area of Alaska. Uh, Shell Oil attempted to move some ships up there out of San Francisco to begin drilling operations, and uh, Greenpeace put on all nature of, uh, of protest to, to stop them. Now, we are not drilling in the Arctic off Alaska, so guess who has moved into that area? Mr. Putin. Uh, we're not there, so because we're not there, we have no military presence up there. Uh, the, the, we're 750 miles away if there's a military problem that we have to, from Elmendorf Air Force Base, if we have to uh, go battle the Russians in any way up there. We have got to drill up there if for no other reason that we would surely then require a military presence there because Russia is only a few miles away. So here is another way that the whole climate change situation is, is standing in the way of, of proper military preparedness. Uh, it's more than patently absurd. Uh, it is a fraud. It is a scam. And our president is four square behind it. And it is putting our soldiers, our sailors, our men and women at risk because any money that is th poured down a drain for a green military and, and doing things for climate change, uh, we're in uh, major league trouble. Now, let me show how bad it is with uh, Donald Forbes' uh, uh, slides. Keely, would you uh, throw up the, uh, uh, the first one? Let's see, I can change them from here. Uh, Donald uh, shows the first slide, of course, that he knows and the military should know that there has been no you know, warming for 18 uh, years. And uh, they assembled in 2007 a Center for Naval Analysis and uh, military advisory. And uh, they were briefed by these people. You all know who Hansen is, but uh, uh, Sokolow, the Princeton University professor, is the blood brother of uh, Hansen, and so are uh, the others. So they only heard from the uh, alarmists. Uh, it was a setup to cause this naval group to uh, have these absurd findings that. Uh, 
Climate change poses a threat to national security. Uh, all the things you've heard about that uh, we've had more droughts and more uh, weather events as a uh, result, and it's going to foster uh, instability, uh, and that there's uh, something the military calls a threat uh, multiplier. Of course, we know these things are not true. Uh, extreme weather events, you've heard this over and over again, are not increasing. Sea level isn't rising. Droughts aren't increasing. And again, uh, on the bottom, we have that slide. Now, I also have to bring in something that a related service to the Navy has uh, done in the last uh, week or so to do away with our uh, global average temperatures, and many of you may have read it. The uh, National uh, Oceanographic and Atmospheric Agency, uh, NOAA, uh, had put out a report in the last uh, two weeks uh, that says all of our records on global warming are wrong uh, because our, our, we were wrong about our sea temperature. 70% of the Earth is ocean. We've uh, not had very good records. We used to just get temperatures from uh, ships uh, uh, running around the ocean. Now we have a lot of buoys. And they took a look at the... Uh, the ocean temperatures with buoys, they took all the data. They didn't go out and make measurements. They took all the data they had, and they decided that the buoys were reading too cool temperatures. And they arbitrarily raised the temperature of every buoy over the whole uh, record going back to the 70s. They raised them by 2 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and and they, they manipulated the data to show that, in fact, the temperature of the Earth was not increasing as much as we thought from 1978 to 1998, but it was increasing a smaller amount, and that in fact now, in the last 18 years, it's been increasing the same amount it was by uh, inflating the temperatures of these buoys over the last 18 years. And so their, their bottom line is that, gee, there is no hiatus in global warming, it's just been a smaller rise uh, going on for, for five decades. And, and now the military you know, has that government-issued report uh, to depend on for, for what they, they do. It is a disgrace. Uh, their findings are, are many uh, here of uh, what they, they need to do. I'll look at the first two and the bottom three. They need to pursue energy op uh, options uh, that are, well, I, I think inconsistent, or consistent with response to climate change. Uh, and they did this now two years later. The first report was 2007. They reconvened the, uh, the same people two years later and just went through it again uh, to make it more current. Uh, the nation's, nation's energy posture is serious and urgent. Uh, threat to national security. And the bottom three, the Department of Defense can contribute to national energy solutions by using renewable energy in their ships, planes, and, uh, and tanks and trucks. And that the Department of Defense should expand the use of renewables uh, in all their installations and should invest in low carbon uh, fuels. They all basically say the same thing, and I told you the actual uh, numbers from the recent uh, uh, work that was done uh, off the coast of Hawaii. We all know that biofuels really have no uh, benefit, and there's the number, exotic biofuel, that they put in our ships uh, uh, off of Hawaii was uh, $27 a gallon uh, versus uh, $360 a gallon uh, standard. Uh, the quadrennial review that uh, is now out there uh, basically is uh, supporting uh, the fact that they have ignored all the facts. They, they've, they've ignored all the reality. Now, James might want to mention his reaction, uh, if he'd like, to meeting with uh, Deputy Undersecretary John uh, Conger when we uh, met with him. Uh, I tend to be easily uh, buffooned. I don't know, what do you call somebody that's... Uh, has the wool pull over his eyes easily because I walked out of his office saying, yeah, wow, you know, good guy. He's uh, doing sensible things. I think James and Joe were smarter uh, than I because they're, they're not really doing uh, anything uh, sensible. 
uh, Don was going to show you the graph you've seen a couple times. The 107 models are the red line and reality are the other two lines. And uh, his final slide, which is why I mentioned Joe's error 10 years ago, is that uh, here's a man that spent uh, 33 years in the military uh, at very high levels. And uh, his concern are, it is a scam. It's a waste of DOD dollars that, that, that can cost lives of the military and, and our lives if we're not possibly de properly defended. Uh, what the impact on our young is going to be, and that science uh, trumps ideology and wishful thinking. And uh, this is why I uh, brought forth the idea that you ought to take a look into uh, Scientology. I mean, excuse me, uh, life. <laughs> why did I say that? <laughs> Boy, is that, if that is not a Freudian slip, I have <laughs> never made one in my life. I don't know where it came from, but it's right. It's right. Uh, I'd like you <laughs> take a look at uh, Lysenkoism. Uh, that's where we're at. And I'll, I'll conclude uh, with a statement that you've all heard. Uh, those that do not have a, a good knowledge of history are bound uh, to repeat it. So be 